Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Spring Vegetable Frittata. That's right, Mother's Day is coming up soon. And I can't help but think if you make her something this delicious, this nutritious, and this beautiful for that brunch, she's going to be extremely proud. Or at the very least, definitely less disappointed. And by the way, even if you have no interest in making this for Mother's Day, how to put together a vegetable frittata is one of those things every cook needs to know. All right, so pay attention anyway. And to get this started, what we're going to need, of course, is some spring vegetables. So what I'm going to be using this time is some green zucchini. I also have one large leek, some gorgeous spring asparagus, one jalapeno, a handful of baby spinach, and some yellow potato. And by the way, very important, if you're going to put potatoes in your frittata, which you really should, those need to be fully cooked ahead of time. And off camera, I'll go ahead and peel that skin off and slice those up. And then as far as the rest of the veggies go, let me show you real briefly how I'm suggesting you prep these. So for the zucchini, very simply, we're going to cut those in half lengthwise and then just slice them across like this, somewhere between a quarter and a half inch thick. And you know what we say around here. It's not the size that matters, it's the consistency. So pick a size and try to stick with it. So that's how I'm doing the zucchini. As far as the asparagus goes, what I want to do is cut off the tips and try to leave those whole. But then for the rest of the spear, we'll just kind of cut across like this. And again, we're making these cuts as even as possible so they cook evenly. Okay, so that's looking good. And it's on to the leek. And as usual, we're only using the white parts and the lighter green parts. So I'm going to split this in half, cut off the root end, and then we'll slice those down the middle so the leek is quartered. And then our final cut will be across like this. And then once our leek is chopped up, we'll transfer all that into a large bowl of cold water, and we will swish it around thoroughly. Oh, you heard me, swish it and swish it good. Because what's going to happen here, any of that dirt and sand we missed in the first rinse is going to fall to the bottom. The leek pieces themselves, of course, are floating on the top. So as long as we swish that around thoroughly enough, as we're skimming these cut leeks off the top, they should be perfectly clean, and any dirt or sand is going to be laying at the bottom of the bowl. So that's our official method for cleaning leeks. So our leeks are set. I went ahead and I seeded and diced our jalapeno, and as I already mentioned, sliced our cooked potatoes. And at this point, what we want to do is turn all this into a frittata. So let's head over to the stove, where I have a heavy-duty 10-inch skillet set on medium heat with a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and we'll go ahead and we'll dump in our chopped leeks with a nice big pinch of salt. And we're gonna cook those stirring occasionally for about five or six minutes until they kind of soften up and the white parts start to turn a little translucent. And the strategy here is we're gonna cook one vegetable at a time, starting with what takes the longest, which in this case is the leeks. So like I said, we'll cook those on medium until they soften up and look something like this, at which point we will add our diced jalapeno and sliced zucchini. And we'll mix that into our leeks. And with each new addition, we're gonna season again with salt. All right, I think adding a little bit with each vegetable is just easier than trying to season everything at the end, at least in this recipe. So we'll add another pinch of salt and continue cooking on medium until the zucchini turn from kind of white and raw looking into something that's much more tender and light green in color. All right, not completely cooked through, but starting to get tender. Don't forget these vegetables continue to cook as we add new ones. And by the way, if you're new to cooking, this is a fantastic recipe to practice with. And we'll talk about that in the blog post. But this is one of those dishes that really helps you hone your observational culinary skills. But anyway, I cooked those zucchini for about five minutes, at which point we're going to add our asparagus, along with another pinch of salt, and we'll stir those in and continue cooking until those turn bright green. And all we're doing here is taking the raw edge off the asparagus. So you can check by tasting one of the tips, and it should still have some texture to it, but it no longer tastes raw, which is exactly how mine was. So I moved on to the next step, which is stirring in our handful of baby spinach, which will stir in just until it wilts, which is only gonna take a minute. And once that's happened, we will add the last of our vegetation, our already cooked and sliced potatoes. And we will stir those in until just heated through, along with yet another pinch of salt. And at that point, our vegetables should be ready to meet the eggs. And by the way, it should be noted, is the reason a frittata exists in the first place is to use up already cooked vegetables. If you ever do have leftover potatoes and vegetables from a previous meal, you could just heat them up and start right from this point and continue on. But anyway, like I said, once all our vegetables have been cooked and or heated through, we will introduce the eggs. So in a bowl, we want to crack 12 large eggs. And of course, we have to season our eggs up a little bit. And we'll do that with a little bit of cayenne. You remember that time you overheard your mom on the phone telling her friend she really wanted to spice things up a little bit? This is probably what she was talking about. We'll also do some freshly ground black pepper and some salt. I know we season the vegetables, but we have to season the eggs also. And then we'll take a whisk and we'll beat this up thoroughly. Okay, so take your time and whisk that for at least half a minute. And when your vegetables are ready, which ours are, of course, 
We will pour that into the pan, which is still on medium heat, by the way. And once our eggs have been dumped in, we will go with the last major ingredient, a nice big handful of crumbled cheese. Now, personally, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use goat cheese or feta cheese. So I ended up compromising and using a goat feta cheese. But the good news is spring vegetables go with any cheese. And what we'll do is we'll stir in about three quarters of the cheese. And then we'll save a little bit for the top. So we'll take our spatula and we'll poke that down in. And we'll make sure everything's fairly evenly distributed. And we'll finish this by topping with the rest of our cheese. And one more shake of cayenne for a little extra color. At which point we're going to break with tradition and turn off the heat. All right, traditionally frittata is only cooked on the stove. It's usually cooked halfway and then flipped over and put back in the pan. Which is risky and usually messy. So we're not going to do that. We're going to finish ours by baking. So let's go ahead and pop this into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Or till the eggs are just barely set. And you should probably start peaking about the 10 or 12 minute mark. So I took a look and it was getting close. It was firming up nicely. And if you give it a little wiggle, there's not a lot of jiggle. Okay, so mine was very close. It was just a little bit wet and loose on the top. So this needed to cook a little longer, which you could just continue doing in the oven. But how I like to finish is by turning my oven from bake to broil which is gonna finish the cooking and as you can see, brown the top beautifully. So like I said, you could just keep it in the oven until it's set, but I do like to do that little extra broiler step. And at this point, technically our frittata is ready to serve, but I highly recommend you let it cool down a little first. All right, in my opinion, a frittata is at its maximum flavor served warm. All right, I just don't think the taste and textures is good piping hot. And while you're waiting for it to cool, one idea, which I think makes a beautiful garnish, I'm gonna stir a little bit of pesto into some mayonnaise and do a quick little aioli to garnish the top. And no, this is so delicious you don't really need it. But come on, it's Mother's Day. Let's go ahead and make it a little extra special. And then once our frittata's cooled down a little bit, we can go ahead and slice it up and we'll serve it with a dollop of that pesto mayonnaise. And then to put this over the top, I'm gonna garnish with an edible flower. In my case, a gorgeous, gorgeous nasturtium. So beautiful and so edible. Those petals kind of taste like watercress. But of course, ironically, I will now move it and not eat it but only because I want to focus on the official tasting here. I'll eat it later, don't worry. And above and beyond how great this looks, this is one of the most delicious vegetable and egg dishes ever invented. All right, while the eggs are set and fairly firm, this frittata is still very moist and tender, mostly thanks to that high vegetable content. And like I said, that goat feta cheese I used was absolutely perfect. Just beautiful little salty, tangy tidbits interspersed here and there. It's just a beautiful plate of food that I really think your mother will enjoy. And I know a lot of you are thinking, sure, it tastes good, sure, it looks good. But that seemed like a lot of slicing and dicing and sautéing. That for a simple brunch entree, that's a lot of work. Well, that might be true. But you know what else is a lot of work? Giving birth. So if anyone deserves a little extra effort, it's the moms out there. All right? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.